All right, so now we have most of the stuff for the actual joining form already done. So all the functionality of it's done on this home page. So now we're gonna create our share page. Uh, share page is also in a way our status page too, but it's gonna be that public page that anyone can see. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna delete all these comments. Um, if you wanna see them, you can actually click on the lecture inside of um, any of our uh, GitHub stuff. You can actually click on the lecture itself. So looking at our GitHub, uh, if we go in there and go to launch with code and you click on any of the lectures, obviously there will be more by the time you're seeing this, but um, click on any of the lecture that you're on or going through and you'll still be able to see the comments there. So you can actually click on Oops, not on that one, but joins and like views and the comments and stuff will still be there. All right, so that takes that out of the way. So I'll delete these. And what we need to do now is actually create a redirect and a view for the share page. So I'm gonna first off create the view for the share page. I'll actually copy this home page view uh, and then delete a bunch of stuff. Just kind of saves me a little time of typing and take out the context. All right, so this is gonna be our share page. So let's call it share. All right, so now that we have this share page, um, it will take in one more thing, which will be our reference ID, which I'll add in a second. But for now, I'm gonna just jump into our URLs and I'm gonna copy this and paste it underneath. And I'm gonna put a slash here, or sorry, not a slash there. Uh, I'm gonna add in a way for us to actually accept a reference ID into our URL. Uh, and this is what's called a argument, or it's a keyword argument is what we're gonna be using. Um, so we can actually use this in our view and we'll see what that means in just a second. And what we see right here is a regular expression. Regular expressions can be a little complicated, so I'll just do it for you and just kind of explain as much as I can uh, as we go. Uh, so it's not too confusing. So. I put these two parentheses on the outside and then that's that dollar sign signifies that whatever's here is done. So like this is our home page, right? So it's not actually going to go any further. So when Jago's reading this and it's on that first page, it's only going to stop here and then it'll look for home. Now if there's code here, if there's something here, it will go uh, to that next page because you'll see that there's code there where the string is stopped here. So it will continue going if there's something before that string ends. Um, all right, so now in here, I'm gonna add in the regular expression. So ref ID and then dot star. All right, so this is basically saying uh, any characters in before the end of the string and that first slash, any of those characters, we will go to the share page. Um, so that's where it's gonna take us. So we actually, and then it's gonna set whatever those characters are to a, a reference ID. And we'll call it share, homes.views.share, and the URL name will be share. All right, so this, now that we've set this, um, we can actually use that reference ID in our view. So it's gonna be passed in as a parameter. All right, so reference ID is coming now through as a parameter. So let's actually just try it out and go print ref ID. So we'll print it when it actually redirects there. And then we'll create the redirect now too so we can actually test it. And within the shortcuts, we just import HTTP response redirect. Copy that, go down here and we'll return HTTP response redirect and then I'll just do share, or sorry, not share, but just slash percent s, and then it's gonna be the percent s, so we're using string substitution, it's gonna be the ref ID is what we want. So we'll go new join old dot ref ID as the string that we are substituting. Okay, so now if they enter in their um, username, it's going to, or excuse me, their email, it's gonna redirect them to that ref ID, whether it's created or not. It's always gonna redirect them there. All right, so let's save it and let's test this out. So let's make sure our server is running, it is. Before I do, I actually am gonna go into the admin. Uh-oh, 
uh, looks like it's not working correctly, so let's go into Sublime Text. Now, if you open up your URLs, you'll see that admin's at the very bottom. This and the admin actually match the same pattern. So um, we want to put this one up first. And at the very top, that way we can um, just keep it from interrupting or th from this view actually handling the admin view when, or the admin URL. Um, so realistically, we'd probably want to have this one last. And notice the home page still worked because the home page was first. Um, all right, so now if we refresh in here, admin comes up. So it joins, I'm just going to delete it. Say yes, I'm sure. Go in here, type in coding for entrepreneurs at gmail. Not two, hit join. Cool, so if you notice, it redirected to a page up here and there's that there's a unique URL. So let's actually check that that's the one. Started with a D, D something. Yep, there we go. That looks like it's the same one. Um, all right, cool. So let's actually try it out again. Hit join. Uh-oh, join with this email already exists. Okay, so this is one of the problems that you might run into using model forms, right? Because it's actually going off of our model. So this unique clause is causing some errors. So granted, we do want it to be unique, but the only way we're creating it is with a git or create. So more than likely it will be unique. So let's actually go ahead and delete it. The unique equals to true. And let's run a schema migration. So python manage.py schema migration joins auto python manage.py migrate joins. All right, python manage.py run server. Cool, do a refresh in here, continue. Once we got rid of that unique clause, it worked. All right, so why is it doing this exactly? Well, if we look in views, we have we see this thing if form is valid, and then we have this join form. So is valid means it validates all of the fields that are coming through um, with the form as it relates to the form itself right here. In this case, it's relating to the model form, which is relating to the model. Now here, if I take away that unique equals to true, it doesn't run, if valid, does not run a check on whether or not that email is actually unique, right? It's not running that check anymore because it doesn't need to, because I got it rid of it. But if I kept it in there, it would stay. Now, I wanna show you this because when you actually create user accounts at some point, if you do custom ones or whatever, you would want unique equals to true most likely. And that's where you would absolutely keep it. And if it said, email already exists, then fine. They would have to reset their password or whatever. But in this case, we want them to be able to click on that and then be redirected uh, to the appropriate page, which will be eventually their share page. Okay, so that's kind of where that handle, that's where that's coming in. And that little, that little switch, oh, this actually could be there, that, that could still be commented, uh, that could still be in there, that's okay. Uh, but that little part is actually a big deal. And, and if you didn't do it before, um, now you would have ran into that error. So adding unique might be a good thing for us. In some cases, it might actually run into some issues for us. Now, if you want to make sure that it's unique, um, or another way to make sure that it's unique, I should say, is when you actually create the object, you do a git or create call. So if you do git or create, this means either or. So either it's going to get the object or the instance that's related to whatever you're passing, or it's going to create it. So in this case, this will definitely be unique for us. Um, and it will create one that's associated to that, or it'll get it. Now, if you create the email somewhere else, like your admin or something like that, you might run into some issues and you might actually have this break and not work too. So I would not recommend that you manually add emails in the admin. I recommend that you use it using this view, no matter what. Okay, so um, that is that. Uh, that's our share page. That's the initial part of the share page. So we still need to design it and do a lot to it. 
Uh, so let's actually add a few things to our share page still. I'm gonna add ref ID into our context. Make sure you use that colon there. And then I'll add a share.html page into our templates, so new file. Save it as share.html. I just hit Command S to quickly go to share or save, excuse me. Uh, and then I'm just going to copy our base.html. And instead of this, I'm just going to put our context of ref ID. So now, if we go, if we actually go directly to a reference ID page, it shows this. Cool. So that's where we're going to leave it off. Uh, this is now obviously a unique page for any email address whatsoever. So we could test it one more time and do abc at gmail, hit join, and now redirects us to our share page, which will eventually look something like this. All right, so we will see you in the next one.